But honestly, like, Bill Evans and Can Can got to lock in. Like, all it takes is one studio session with Can Can, and I feel like Bill would start sipping mud. That part is so crazy. Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make better plug and B melodies. So before we get started, make sure to go tap in with me on social media at Enviral. But let's lock in. one of the best can can songs this is like the classic plug and b sound and pretty much what's happening here is three chords b flat minor seven and then d sharp minor nine and then f7 but it's juiced up to sound very different like they're using really cool voicings here and then this is the best chord it's like a F13 sharp five or something like that. But to be able to play these cool voicings, you first gotta understand the very basics of how these chords work. So in any scale, you can build a chord out of every note. So if you take A minor, so every note is a chord. So these are our chords that we're working with. And when you're making chord progressions, you kind of want to keep in mind where you're going and where you want to end up. If I play none to me in A minor, it'll sound like this. And as you can see, I'm going for my one chord, which is A minor, and then I'm going to my four chord, one, two, three, four, D minor, and then I'm going to my five, which is E major. So it's actually E minor, but I'm playing E major because that leads better into here. E is the fifth note of A minor because, you know, if you count up, one, two, three, four, five. So the fifth chord is called the dominant chord, and this is going to be super important later in the video, so make sure you understand this. And the dominant chord, the five, leads really well back into the one chord, which is A minor. So you see that's a really good transition. If you're still confused about what I'm talking about, I'm literally counting from the scale. So, you know, A is one and E is five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you just build chords around with that. For example, in C minor, our dominant chord would be G because that's the fifth note of the scale. So next, pretty much what I'm gonna do is add sevens to these chords to make them more jazzy. What that means is I'm adding an extra note from the scale, which is the seventh note in the scale. I'm just counting up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then here, I'm just counting up from D minor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I'm also adding the ninth, which is another extension of the chord, so seven, eight, nine. And for this E dominant chord, I'm gonna add a seventh also. I can just count up for my five, five, six, seven. If you notice, this seventh chord has a different color than uh, my A minor seven or something. It's really important that you hear the difference between like a dominant seventh and a major or minor seventh, because a dominant seventh, it sounds kind of diminished and harsh, but a minor seven or a major seven, sound really vibrant this chord really wants to resolve down to the a minor because we have a diminished chord up here you know it's moving up just stepwise motion if you have any dominant chord you can easily resolve it by going down a fifth so i'm going to take this e and you know play a fifth a down which is a and you can resolve it down but we're still playing these in root position which is pretty boring you know you kind of want to add extra notes and move things around to make it more interesting. So what I'm going to do is play A minor 7, you know, this chord like this. For any jazzy chord, all you need pretty much is your 3rd and 7th. So pretty much what I'm doing again is moving the 7th down an octave. And then removing my root note, the A note, and mo moving it up to a B, to, so the 2nd note of the scale. You can just play the root an octave down. And then I can make my D minor also the same voicing. So I can just move this to D. And you just got to make sure the root note is D. And then now most importantly for my dominant seventh chord, I really like this voicing. You know, it's kind of a more altered sound because I'm literally playing an augmented chord down here. What that means is I'm taking a major chord, you know, my E major, and I'm making the fifth note sharp. So this is just the augmented chord now, and it gives it a really unstable sound. And then I'm playing my 7th, and I'm playing like a 13 up here. 
This is kind of like a really confusing sound, and this really wants to go back to the smooth chord. This augmented color really shines through the whole chord. In jazz, like it gets crazy, you know, you can just build anything you want on top of this chord. For example, this song Blue and Green by Miles Davis and uh, Bill Evans is a perfect example of the colors that I'm talking about. It's just so crazy, especially this chord is so colorful. It's just the A7, but you know, he's playing it like this. I can show you guys how to make this kind of chord super easily. So pretty much what I'm doing is putting a major chord in. A major and then I'm taking this chord and copying it and putting it directly above so a half step above a major and obviously you can tweak around with the notes and make it sound uh, a little bit better so what I'm gonna do is just take this E and move it down one it's a really beautiful colorful chord but now we got to find a way to like make this chord resolve you want to have a balance between like the stability the peaceful sound and then the unstable you know more tense sound so the way Bill Evans resolved it is he went to D minor. It's all about memorizing these shapes. Again, the most important thing is just to improve your ear to be able to hear all these chords because at the end of the day, your ear is way more important than the theory, you know? So just listen to a lot of jazz. Like, as I said again, just definitely listen to Bill Evans. All right, so now I think I wanna lock in on a beat and uh, let's just go crazy. So I didn't really like that last melody, so I switched to this one. It's definitely more catchy because it follows this little arpeggiated melody. So now what I'm going to do is tap into my portal bank and add some textures to this. That one's kind of hard. All right, so now I'm gonna go into my Elixir one-shot kit and grab this slide preset. And then I'm gonna get this lead for my upcoming one-shot kit. And let's make a crazy like lead with this. Let's just make sure these overlap so they can slide. put portal on this just to make it more wavy for these kind of plug and beat melodies you know you want to make it super romantic so i'm gonna add a really high strings layer just kind of give it that like you know nostalgic feeling I'm just gonna repeat it. All right, so next I'm gonna get another expand and get like some pizzicato strings to give this melody a little bit of groove. That's hard. Maybe an octave down. And then what I'm gonna do with that is just add some delay on it. And then some chorus. I think I'm gonna layer this with this kind of bell keys.
like plug beats have a super unique kind of drum bounce. So I'm gonna just try to go crazy on that. Uh, let's tap into systems. And these kind of beats, the clap is more subtle, so I'm just gonna move it up to like D sharp. Also, the hi hat has to be like super short, so let's try to find one to work with. And then I'm just gonna add a cool bounce to the hi hats. Maybe let's just copy that and see what happens. So I'm gonna go into Fractal and uh, grab this rim. We just gotta do like an accent pattern with this. Let's grab this snare. And then I'm just playing with the velocities to give it like a cool groove. These beats, although they're kind of simple, have a lot of like crazy percussion in the background. So let's add a triangle also, like a zap angle perk. Just gonna try to find a cool pocket for this. That's hard. Do a second 808 pattern so let's grab another cool 808 maybe friday See what the other melodies sound like with this. That's so hard. I think lastly what I'm gonna do is add this hi-hat roll in here. Maybe just on the one, because it's kind of like a classic sound they use a lot. I think it's time to split everything by channel and uh, yeah, let's arrange this real quick. Let's make it start with the Z808. I'm only gonna make this kind every other bar. Cut out the hi hats right here. And that's pretty much the beat. All right, guys, but that's pretty much all I got for today's video. I hope you guys learned some cool ways to improve your plug and B melodies. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure to give it a like, leave a comment, and also subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads. But that's all I got for today, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.